I guess you had some sort of situation at one point um, where I guess someone attacked you. It was uh, something real bad. Can you talk about that at all? Oh, you mean in the street? Yeah. Oh, that was like right after shooting The Last Dragon. I I, I was at a, my, I don't know who was DJing. Was it my brother? I, my brother was DJing or someone uh, in New York. And I was at a party. It was a club, a small club, not too small, but, you know, not huge. And there was a big, there was a gang in, in uh, uptown that was known to be pretty much, th their, their name were the ball busters at the time, you know, and they were a Dominican gang. And, and what happened was there was this uh, fight that broke out in the dance floor. It was my friend and I didn't know. And I saw, and, and, and then the guy that was on him, uh, I pulled him off and hit him and he fell down. And then he looked at me and he said, I'll be back. And, um, you know, I was like, yeah, right. So uh, I didn't know he was a ball buster. And, and my friends were like saying, yo, you got to get out of here, man. Just go, go. And I said, you know, I paid it no mind. But then they kept telling me to, you know, go, you know. So <laughs> so I got out of there. But when I walked outside, there were six guys <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> and uh, one cat ran away that I knew. He said, I'm getting out of here. And, but they, they, so, so they approached me and said, yo, you know, yo, you stole my boy's gold chain. So the guy was a coward. He lied, you know, he started a fight with my friend, you know, and I didn't steal anything from him. So, uh, they just started going at me, you know, and I, uh, actually started doing well. Uh, I was, uh, just in the moment knew that I had to protect myself and just second instinct every, you know, at that time I was training so hard. I know that I was hitting somebody and they're going to hit, they're going to feel it, you know? Uh, but one cat, I, he had the knife or a bottle. I got hit in the head, sliced on the side of my face. And when the bottle is what slowed me down because it was like a hard bottle, you know, it almost knocked me out. I got dizzy and they just ran off. Thank God. Uh, so that was right after, it would have been terrible, right? I get stabbed to death right before this, the, the opening of The Last Dragon. So my girlfriend at the time was crying at the hospital. Like, Ooh, it was just, yeah, it was terrible. My mother was- So you had, you, you had your face uh, sliced? Yeah, over here, I think there's still a little mark, yeah. Uh, okay. You got it was a hospital. bad, back in then, New York was really terrible. <laughs> it was really, New York was great. It was really amazing, but it had a dark side to it. So. Yep. Sad, man. Sad. It's sad. Um, I'm happy I lived, so I'm not so sad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I guess at one point, uh, there was uh, talks of A Last Dragon Part 2. At one point. It's been going on forever. <laughs> okay. It's been going on forever. Well, I guess, I guess you had a, a crowdfunding campaign, and uh, I guess Samuel Jackson was supposed to play Show Enough? No, that was a... Uh... All talk between uh, some people at Sony and some other characters, you know, I I can't say, you know, I, you know, they were reaching out to me, and uh, but I just didn't feel everything was at the right time. This was years ago. This is around right after um, Julius Carey Shonuf died, uh, 2008. Uh, I think they were just trying to feel out online what people wanted. Uh, a lot of people didn't want a remake. They didn't want a sequel. But, you know, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I know the rights are up next year uh, to the film. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't you know. Well, I mean, three of the main characters from The Last Dragon are no longer with us. I mean, we talked about Vanity. And, you know, you mentioned Julius Carey, who played Show Enough. Uh, but also Leo O'Brien, who plays your little brother, he also passed uh, a few years ago. I think he was only like 41 or something at the time. Right. I mean, you, yeah. You, you know, you just, with these days, amazing projects like Game of Thrones, I mean, look what happened with Snow, right? He died and he came back. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things that could be done, but... but uh, I know he didn't literally die. The actor didn't die, so uh, it's it's a different thing. But just with with film or TV, you can get very creative 
in making something happen and, and and but you have to really think things out and you have to be intelligent you know you can't be too cocky you have to really know the essence of what people love about uh this film you know uh really I think they love not just the humor that that's a big that was like the icing on the cake, but they love all the uh, actors that were in it. They love all the color colorful characters. They love all the music. Uh, they love that it was uh, a diverse cast. Yet it was um, there was a lot of heart in there. You know, you know, you had a, a, a character that that you can identify with. Everybody, to a certain degree, thinks that, uh, uh, you know, that, that there are people out there that don't want them to be successful and, or, or, you know, like Bruce Leroy, he was on a journey. He was a good guy on a journey and everybody's trying to stop him, you know? So there's a lot of people identify with that. There's a lot of good people out there that identify uh, with the fact that there's a lot of people that don't want them to be successful, you know, in some way. So I think they identify with that character and they just like the chemistry between me and Danny and other characters. So it's not, it's a very difficult thing to um, replicate, you know. Um, you can only do something maybe similar, but you have to have the, a strong foundation uh, to really captivate uh, people that love the movie so much. Can't You can't just wing it, you know. Well... You know, when I was a kid, martial arts was huge. Like, I remember in elementary school, you know, making nunchucks at home by, you know, cutting up some brooms, <laughs> you know, and putting a chain in between them. And Bruce Lee was like a god, you know, growing up. But you look at 2019 and martial arts movies are almost non-existent. You know, in China, I'm sh I'm sure there are, but in America, like I can't even think of a martial arts star these days. That's right. That's right. And there's a reason why. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because it's been so white watered. Everybody's throwing a round kick, but nobody really knows martial arts. You know, I mean, there are some. Don't get me wrong, but you know, for me, the acting is the most important thing. You know, and then if you if you captivate people with the acting, you know, then they're invested in the story. They're invested in the project, you know? I think they do it backwards. They make the martial arts the whole thing, but then after a while, it looks like a bunch of uh, gymnasts or monkeys jumping around, you know? Everybody throws a kick, everybody's jumping, everybody's flipping, you know? But what about first captivating somebody with a story, you know? Making people uh, identify with the characters, taking them on a a journey, a trip that they don't want to leave, you know? And then giving people, uh, uh, and making uh, the star vulnerable, and then making the, you know, his, ad his or her adversary someone that you just don't want around, yet you're interested in, you know? Once you do things like that, then you deliver martial arts uh, in, a, in a certain way that is an art, not just a, uh, a kick and a punch. You know? Hopefully, in the in the near future, there there will be another star. You know, because I grew up with Van Damme and Steven Seagal, and you know, people like that. Where it's like, okay, there's whole franchises around these people, and it's all kind of based on martial arts. These days, like I said, I don't think it's even around anymore, and uh, it's too bad. I think people are missing out because of that. Yeah. Yep. Well. Uh, Ty Mock, man, definitely appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it's been um, great. You know, for anyone who hasn't watched The Last Dragon, uh, it's on Netflix right now. It's it's absolutely stunning. You know, even the, you know, with the special effects being what they were back then, like the part at the end where you're fighting Show Nuff and like every time you guys are hitting each other, there's like the, the flashes of blue and orange. Yeah. Really well done, man. Really dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like real art, right? It's it's not so clean. It had, yeah, but but uh, it's colorful. Uh, that shown up, you know. He was so funny, you know. He was he, there was so much, you know. I mean, right now, uh, I'm excited about what I'm up to, and uh, you can find me on Instagram at I am Timok, I A M T A I M A K. Um, yeah, I've got some interesting things happening, and I think uh, I think you'll like it. No doubt, man. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Ron.
It's what it is. Until next time. Peace. Peace and love.